Boom, we're in. Uh, super exciting to have the Brother Zeitlins for Encore Performance. This time we're on camera. First time a year plus ago we were just on audio. Uh, I didn't think I would ever migrate to YouTube, but uh, you know what? The podcast is doing well and people ask me how come you're not on YouTube. So here we are. We're, we're there. Um, so welcome, guys. Why don't we start uh, with a quick introduction? Uh, Sam, go for it. Hey, everybody. My name is Sam Zeitlin. I'm the chef uh, owner of Zeitlin's Delicatessen. We're a local Jewish deli that uses the city of Chicago as our inspiration. We make incredible bagels, sourdough breads, pastries, the best nosh in town. And I get to work every day with my best friend and my lovely brother hey all right sam. and the lovely brother I'm, I'm sam's brother my name's hal i help uh do some of the business and marketing work at zeitlands um, when i'm not doing that i have a web development agency we focus on webflow sites uh, and i am launching my first software product in about a month and so uh really glad to be back with Zev and be like, oh my gosh, look at all, look at all that's happened in the last year. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, obviously a lot has happened. Some of it is in, in our universe, our tribe uh, was not, was tragic and sad. I don't think we'll talk about it. Maybe at the end, we'll just say a couple of good words. But um, so this is an entrepreneurial show and you both are entrepreneurs in your own right and then you kind of merge because because you work together so just as a super quick intro sam i don't want to repeat the first 20 minutes of our first podcast where you took us through your journey of how you got to be the chef that you are i'm gonna go for memory that you were there was a michelin level restaurant maybe you work there um so you can cover that and really kind of bring us to the point where you decide I'm not going to be a chef working for other people. I'm going to go serve the tribe of my uh, Jewish friends and family. And by the way, I know a lot of people not Jewish who love good bagels. And uh, so and for, for the rest of my audience who are may not i always like to stop when we use terminology whether it's marketing or something else so the word nosh n o s h is pretty much a a a yiddish word kind of a, a word that we use for for food right to make it simple right you want to grab a nosh take a gable you give it a little schmear which is a little a twist a twist of the hand in a cream cheese and then you're happy so sam Quickly, uh, Michelin staff, chef training, and then the point where you said, yes. I'm not doing this anymore. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I always love food. I always love bringing people together, uh, sharing stories, learning, listening, um, and went to culinary school, worked in some fine dining restaurants, learned a lot there, um, you know, some in New York some in Chicago, some in Washington, D.C. And um, during my time in Chicago, I was looking for Jewish deli and fresh bagels and things I grew up eating. And um, I wasn't, I didn't really find anything that I really enjoyed. And I was thinking about family and, you know, how our dad and mom, you know, took us to delis allowed us to, you know, have an amazing uh, cultural experience with food. Um, and then during the pandemic, uh, I lost my job and decided that it was time to go off and make some bagels. Um, I was making a lot of bread at my house uh, years past, raising money from melanoma awareness and research. Um, and now we're, you know, four years in. The last time we talked, Zeb, we were, you know, busting at the seams of our shared kitchen. Now we're at a food stall. So storefront junior, 
and we're selling our delicious food to uh, incredible folks at the office building, still doing the farmer's markets, still, you know, getting that storefront. It's coming. I can feel it. And uh, Hal and I have really grown in our communication. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been really nice. So, so people can now walk on a street and see your, you call it a store, but you'll see your, it's yes. not, a, is it a deli or is it, or is it so, only bagels? So uh, we operate out of, uh, from here on, it's a food hall in Chicago uh, inside okay. the loop. So it's uh, inside of an office building. So they have like Walgreens, Uber headquarters, PepsiCo, okay. and you can go down to the first floor and you got can it. enjoy, you know, fresh bagel sandwiches. We got some corned beef brining. This is all so big after four years where, you know, we're finally, you know, testing out this, you know, classic Jewish deli staple. Uh, we're doing a Reuben with oyster mushrooms. It's just like really fascinating stuff, really great stuff. We got fresh coffee. We got babka. We got pastries. We got some laughs, some giggles. Oh it's, it's a good time. So, um, at, at the point that you got laid off and you decide to be an entrepreneur, right? I'm gonna go do this on my own now. Did you talk to your brother and said, "I'm thinking about this. What do you think?" Yeah. So Hal and I have kind of been. Uh, discussing directly and indirectly for years about kind of like, you know, both of our passions, you know, mine being food, how, how being, you know, in the, the web space and, uh, you know, at our core, we like really love service and like really, you know, helping folks and wanting to share. So, um, Hal was like, yeah, you know, we're going to do this meal prep company and it's going to be this and that. <laughs> no, no. It's like, we're going to do a Jewish deli. And it's going to be Zeitlin's Delicatessen. He's like, what? No, man. No. And and I do have to say, like, Hal is, is just such um, a wise soul. And, and Hal's, yeah, you, you know, right, like, a lot, a lot of the time. But, you know, sometimes my stubborn older brother behavior comes out. I'm like, Hal, we're doing this. Like, it's... it's yeah, but, it, you know, it's... it's supposed to be the other way around. It's supposed to be that the older brothers got all the sechel and the, and the wisdom and the young guy is the one um, flying around bouncing off the walls doing 17 things at the same time i heard this beautiful story and i we're gonna get into some and some history you know ephraim and man nasha i i don't exactly remember the whole story but sometimes the younger brothers got you know, a duty and a mission. The older brother's got a duty and a mission. And sometimes they're going to, you know, they're going to have to be a little bit different, but um, that sometimes, you know, I, I, I got to take, I got to take the younger brother's advice. And sometimes he's, he, he is going to have to take, you know, the advice from me, but really we've, we've really, really uh, we're onto something. It's, it's hot. It's cool. We're getting ready for, um, we're getting ready for Purim. We're getting ready for Passover, and and just just some really really good stuff coming. So um, I'm going to talk to Sam now, but uh, I'm still Hal. I'm sorry, Sam, but Sam, can you just reposition yourself so you're more closer to the middle of the frame? There you go, perfect. All right, Sam. Your your quick history. He said he's the web guy. Were you always the web guy? When did you fall in love with webs? I. After college, I did this program called Teach for America. Is that, are you familiar with oh, yeah. it? That's right. Yes, yes, yes. And so, uh, yeah, when I was there, they, they throw you in some of the more most needy, ch challenging classrooms in the U.S. And I, I started a website for my kids and I made homework videos and all my kids were my subscribers. And so uh, that was kind of my first experience building, building websites there. And then I moved to L.A. and like didn't know what I was going to do. And I just started playing around and you know, the cool thing about the internet and business is that you just have problems to solve. And now we have resources where you can just learn. And so I guess it's part of my personality to just wanting to learn how to solve new problems. And uh, one thing led to another. And now um, Sam and I have these, these complementary skills and we're able to build something and help people in a meaningful way. 
So it just, you know, all it takes is time and curiosity, I think, don't you think? So, so the, the Teach for America thing, what made you do that as opposed to something else? I, I was naive when I was younger. I thought that like business was like inherently greedy and wrong. Um, and I just never saw myself pursuing that, that path. And so I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, after college. And it just seemed like, you know, a good, and I guess it was, you know, a lot of people who do that then go on to do other things afterwards. Like as the program, it's, most people do it, don't stick around in teaching. So I thought, yeah, it could be something I do now and then I can find out what I want to do later. Um, but it was just, you know, something that a lot of people in universities and private schools did after college. And so I kind of just, mm -hmm. I didn't know what else I was going to do. So I hopped on board. So, so you're a web guy. Uh, I always say I've been doing websites, not as a developer, but as, as a relatively early adopter since 2001, I think. <laughs> Uh, when we were in the medical industry and internet, you know, it was, it started before, but I think it came into being more like around the 2000 and websites started to pop. And, and I remember sitting with my, my employer and I said, yeah, everybody's coming out with these websites. Why don't we wait? Let's see how this unfolds. We, let's not rush to be just another website. Let's see where they go and how this thing develops. It's relatively new. So we, we waited like six, seven, eight months, uh, which in internet progression moves pretty fast. Yeah. We watched what everybody did and they pretty much copied each other. And I, I, I don't know if it was WordPress that was first, the first platform or not, but we kind of watched around and I was more interested in, it, it, was, it, it was premature to talk about SEO, search engine optimization that came on a little later. But we wanted to differentiate ourselves and to do different things. So um, you're now with a platform that's called Webflow, right? Yep. Um, jumping into the shark tank of website, web building, development, shark tank filled with sharks. Um, why go into it? That because there's so many of it. So I'm going to ask you the same question I ask every business owner that I interview. Mm -hmm. um, what problem are you solving? How well, Zeitlin? It's, yeah, it's been coming together. Um, I've been seeing how this software product that we're building and our, our service business, it's really about helping marketing teams and sales teams uh, own their marketing layer without being dependent on external resources. So my, my business is uh, our, our vision and, and growing mission is to help stand up and train companies to be able to build on their website uh, much more quickly without breaking things in a consistent way. And the technology is still not fully there to do that exactly as I, as I want, um, but it's, it's getting closer and closer. And so at this stage, um, it is a very niche specialty service that involves a lot of strategy, consulting, and experience to advise brands on how to plan and execute and train on their websites. But I would think in five years, what I'm doing right now is going to be much more of a commodity. The technology is going to evolve. Uh, people are just going to have, have had more time. And while we can still provide, you know, from our experience, a more consultative service of, of helping brands do this, I just think naturally... Um, you know, right now we're able to make a lot of impact because it's, it's, it's hard to do and it's going to just become less and less hard over time. So, so it's new tech in the web space. Um, it's not in its infancy because now you've been doing it for a good couple of years and you the platform's you 10 years old too. So it's been 10 years old. Yeah. 10 so this platform. Yeah. What, what can you compare this to in terms of relatively new tech that's going to maybe that's actually disrupting? Because you're now telling people you can be in charge of your own web, right? And build it. What can you compare this to something else that we know? Like if you went back and said, oh, this is like this that became that. Maybe so it's a I, tough question. I, I just thought about it, but go ahead. Yeah, I've got a great answer. But there's a guy doing the the, the, the thing outside. Is I hope you can edit this out. Is that how should I handle when there's weed whackers outside? <laughs> The, the weed whackers, really? There's, I guess maybe it's getting cut out. I'll, I'll just keep going. This is the thing when you no, work from fine. home. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was Sam's got the on, kitchen. On, 
Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I was on a Zoom call with somebody. A corner, it's it's so loud all the time. No, I'm in I, like a little secluded area. Yeah, I was hearing in the beginning. I was hearing kind of banging and stuff. Oh, who cares? This is it's us guys. Is we're there. Talking. We go. We're hanging uh, out. Yeah, it, it's okay. So, I mean, yeah. So what can you compare it to something from from a? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me explain to you where the web needs to go for more mature, sophisticated brands. There's a spectrum. The left side of the spectrum is no code, drag and drop, total abstraction. Right. Take a teenager. They could do it. Now, is it going to look unique, special, stand out, and have a, a lot of customization? No. By definition, when you're doing that, it's not. That's the side of the spectrum. On the right side is totally code, extreme control, <laughs> but a lot more of a learning curve and lay people can't access and manipulate that. So what platforms like Webflow are doing, and this is why I'm saying the technology is not fully there yet, but it's getting closer and closer. It's letting you um, merge the principles of a visual development, a visual building with writing code. So it's letting people write the code without having to type the code. And then on top of that, it's building an interface where people can take these custom elements and sections and manipulate them like Lego blocks and put them together to build new landing pages, um, this and that, without having to actually touch a line of code. So what we're okay. really doing is we're building a whole ecosystem and a, and, and a universe for you that you can then piece together so that you don't have to keep going to developers anytime you want to edit or build on, on your site. So... The way my brain works, I'm thinking now, I'm visualizing marketing automation where, you know, we used to have to put the pieces together, but now you can go to some, you know, the good product, the good platforms, and you can literally, it's still drag and drop, but the code's behind it, right? So you can create the branches. You don't have to write the code. What you are doing is, is one level up. You can be, have complete control of the code behind it and do it. So I'll ask the question again. So what problem are we solving now? Are we probably solving a problem that that the platforms today yeah. require your dependency on the code coder, the developers, where this all gives you the independence to do it yourself because you know your business better than any program. Yeah, and look, like we have clients who pay us every month to help build new things and maintain a new strategy. Um, but we have a lot of clients that once we build their site, you know, they're not at that level of growth where they, they need us anymore. And so, you know, it's not like people, they, we still need to have developers and professionals. Um, but what we're doing is for launching new landing pages, deploying new content, uh, putting new banners, um, just ma maintaining any dynamic content. We're enabling companies and people with very little web experience to be able to confidently do this. And it's it's letting you do it without breaking your site. You know, WordPress, we've all used WordPress in the past. Like no one looks forward to going into a WordPress site to maintain it. Um, you know, it's it's so easy on a WordPress site for it just not to look consistent. Yeah. So a problem that we're solving with Webflow and with the professional service like ours is we're helping people really build a very, very custom um, experience that um, is intentional without, uh, you know, having it be a bunch of ones and zeros on a dark screen. Got it. So, and to be clear, we do write a lot of code. We do write a lot of code and we, we put that into the system, but you know, it's not, it's not totally necessary. Um, a lot of the time. Yeah. And, and so what you, you're providing for people that are, I mean, all of us rely on web technology and web platforms, but you're providing the ability to customize, adjust it independent of a third party. So you can, I mean, you still help, need your help if it's complicated, but obviously, um, yeah, because look, I've used WordPress for many, many years. And I think it was maybe six, seven years ago, my son started, was doing some web work and, and switched to Squarespace. And he said to me, dad, we got to drop this stuff. Because my frustration with <laughs> WordPress was the plugins and the updates and the security holes. And the constant and the dependency on the web press guys, and I know they're going to hate me because there are a lot of them still out there, um, who were always overworked, spread too thin, and you couldn't get responses quick enough. And it's too complicated. And Squarespace, 
for not for everybody, but for people that need a beautifully designed site that's still drag and drop and 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 adjustments, it's perfectly okay. So, but that look, gets the job done. Great. Yeah, yeah. So this is not so. So we're not your customers. It's more for. I guess you're more, I, I was going to say you're more for an enterprise clients, but that's probably not true. It's for people that need the growing, scaling and need the independence, right? Yeah, we are. We are enterprise partners with Webflow and we have done some enterprise sites, but it's really, you know, when someone comes to me, it's like, hey, like we people hire us when they're at a stage in their business where like we are losing opportunity, like we are being held back. Mm by our, our current website and we need to like something it's it's holding us back and we want to push through and do something so until someone gets to that point we're usually not working with those brands and so many brands can stand up something yeah. in a more streamlined way um you know so that's that's what we're doing the other thing i'd say is which makes me really excited is just trying to bring peace and harmony inside our clients companies you know one of our clients maybe we work with seven different people in their marketing organization and my vision and goal is that as they operate we're standing them up and supporting them that they have peace and harmony um, and making their marketing functions work. So yeah. it's not only about the actual technical work, but the actual experience building on the site. Perfect. So your brother is chomping at the bagel because I got to pay, pay some attention to him now. Um, so, Sam, you, you know, for me, I like to eat. But for me, going into the food service business... Uh, and knowing some people that own restaurants, knowing some people that work in that industry, it is incredibly challenging, right? I mean, you th this is one of these businesses where you have to deliver almost on every bite because people's patients who go into food establishments, whether it's a restaurant or whether it's a falafel stand in the corner, our tolerance is close to zero. Oh, I didn't like that meal. I'm not going back there again. Right. So that's the bar that, that you kind of have to meet. I mean, you're in a building, obviously, with somewhat captive audience. But still, if you produced, I'll use a, a Yiddish word called Drek, which is, you know, D-R-E-K. If you produce Drek, which basically means shit in Yiddish, the people in the building would just complain to management and say, this, these people are no good. So how do you... As an entrepreneur now, as a guy that has a business, the people are have a low tolerance for not good food, and everybody's idea of good food is different, right? Does that worry you? I mean, how do you deal with this? Um, does it worry me that everything like matters, yeah. and that if you know, God forbid, something happens, like it's could totally get screwed up at any time is, is yeah that what you're yeah asking? because like you sure you can make you can make the best bagel with lux and schmear or anything else or this whatever pickled stuff you mentioned and you hand it to somebody and they don't like it i mean this is the business you're in it's, it's like um, an instant yes or no yeah so kind of similar to like how what he was saying is, you know, trying to bring peace and harmony to, uh, you know, the uh, the folks that he serves. Like every, you know, every time we make the bread, every time we make the bagels, every time we create a sandwich or a dish, you know, we're really trying to put amazing energy, amazing focus into what we're doing. Um, our food, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, something great about being a chef is you're, you know, at your core wanting to take care of people and um, using food as a vehicle to do that. Um, yeah, I think with inflation, um, with, you know, rising costs and everything, um, mm -hmm. it is tricky. And even when, you know, you're seeing things going up in sales and you're seeing way more communication and like, you know, our team's really getting it and, you know, I'm getting stronger in many different ways. Like it's still, you know, and like you, you're trying to, you know, stir a bunch of uh, sauces on the stove and trying to make sure that, um, 
you know, one sauce mm-hmm. doesn't burn, you know, type of thing. So um, I think that it's just, you know, just being calm, being cool, understanding things will happen. Somebody's, you know, going to get a wrong order or, you know, a delivery driver is going to steal the order, you know, maybe take a bite of it, you know, like these things happen and it's just problem solving. Like it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's really just problem solving. It's working with people. Um, yeah. I love doing and, um, it's, it's just incredibly satisfying. Um, like I, I started the conversation like, uh, by saying, you know, we're, finally making corned beef um it's like i was very reluctant to start doing that at our at our scale right now even though we're four years you know into the business really almost four years like the cost of meat it has to sit in a brine for two weeks so we're waiting for two weeks to serve this thing but but it's also like we're trusting the process you know we're we're trusting that by adding the right amount of, you know, salt and sugar and pink salt and spices and, you know, just allowing it, the thing to happen, you know, in two weeks, once we slowly cook it and, you know, once we get the rye bread going and everything and like we finally tell people, hey, you know, St. Patrick's Day is coming up and like we wanted, you know, after this time, like we wanted to make this corned beef. Like I think that is going to bring people in. I think that's so, like, so you know, cool. your your younger um, brother, because he's the marketing guy, would tell you what I'm about to tell you yeah. that um, you can go into one of these really fancy steak places in the city in Brooklyn. Uh, what's a place on on the water? I, the name escaped me, but anyway, the the most famous steak place in the city. And when you go in there, they age their meats. You know, you can walk in and see those those places. Yeah. And they'll charge you fifty, seventy dollars a steak, but part of it is before you come in, you know that they age their meat, so you're you're primed to get very, very high end steaks. Who cares about the price, right? It's it's already pre done. So for you with the with the brining stuff, two weeks, my my goodness, you should educate your your Irish friends in the building. That hey, when you take a bite into this sandwich on St. Patrick's Day, just know this is how long it took to make this thing for you. And you know, it's like it's like a marketing phenomenon from a from a behavioral psychology standpoint. That when you there was a study, I think it was Betty Crocker, you know, the the ready-made cakes. So they tested the ready-made cakes where you do nothing to it, right? You just pour water and you mix it. And then there was another one where you actually have to take an egg actually do extra work the ones that won were the ones that needed that that required the extra egg because the part of being a participant in creating your own cake even though it's from a box psychologically is a big deal right so for you hey you bite into this meat just understand i'm i'm giving you my secret sauce it was two weeks brining then it was this. Then it was making sure the temperature of the sauce. Well, whatever. I'm not telling you how to, to do chef stuff. But so tell me how the two of you work. Because he's he can eat, but he's not a chef. Where where do you guys collaborate? And he's and he's, he's skinnier than the so, than both of us, so he can definitely eat. Um <laughs> so we work, you know, we work sometimes directly um how how has been coming coming out more often to chicago to check everything out and then sometimes we're working remotely uh you know over email on the phone um you know we have different strengths and we respect and honor that um i think in general we both we look at the business the way it is and then we address accordingly. You know, I think having dreams, you know, this is a dream, living it out, but really seeing where we're at now and then making decisions now for later, not like, you know, going too fast. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's shown so, that we are successful. So, I mean, we are so this is great because, because you have, 
two brothers who are working together, skill sets completely different. But in this case, so is he the, so you're the day-to-day -day guy, the operational guy, maybe the dreamer, but he's the strategic guy. would say, okay, that's right. I'm guessing this is where we're at. Go ahead, yeah. Sam. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say so. But I'll, I'll chime in here. One thing that's changed that since we spoke last is we've we've really built a stronger core team. Um, and I've actually been spending less time working in the Zeitlin's business. Um, and it's great because I was mm -hmm. I was killing myself beforehand balancing that in the agency. And so I'm I'm very grateful. And so um, we've really built a really strong group of we have someone else who's who's really managing, leading the marketing, you know, doing a phenomenal job. Um, super intelligent and capable, still meeting with him and working with him and, and focusing on the big picture. Um, Andres, who's been uh, overseeing operations and, and business uh, ops and has just been killing it. Like, oh my gosh, like I've just, you know, the one thing you learned is spending more time in business and Sam and I still are young here. It's just the more time you hear, just the more you see that you need to depend on other people. You need to recruit really great talent and empower them. And the whole idea of like, oh, we're working so hard and this and that, it's like, that's not how we find success, I don't think. I think it's about just finding the right people, having proper communication. And so the way Sam and I work together, you know, when there's a big choice, we'll get on. And I see I have a pattern where sometimes Sam's like, Hal, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, just talk to Andres and, you know, you guys figure that. You know what I mean? I'm kind of deflecting. And there's a time and a place where that's, that's totally critical and important. But also, I think I could be doing better at, now that we're on this side of the spectrum like realizing that like sometimes Sam and me jamming out on, on a business problem and me, you know, slowing down to really get more contacts, provide input is, is very valuable. And so um, I think, I think it's a balance, but I will say I'm so grateful that we've built out a really strong um, core team on the, on the digital strategy business side. Um, and, and so, then, and then over here, like in the kitchen, now that we've expanded like way more delegations yeah. involved, um, you know, like it started as Sam and Hal, Sam was making the food, Sam was schlepping, Sam was at the farmer's market, I was selling, I was baking, all this stuff. We have an incredible team, uh, bakers, cooks, managers, like just like really, really interesting. And, and, and you know, you, you look up and like assess and see and it's like, wow, like this is this is what it is now, you know, now we're, now we're having the second chat with Zeb. Now we're, now we're at the old post office, you know, and um, I think like it's, it's been so, really, really so, great to see. And uh, go like, go on, keep going, keep going, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, like, um, no, just, just, just like the thing that's so special about like, you know, Jewish deli is, is, is that the Jewish deli, like, needs uh you know insight and like yes we lead by tradition but like it now more than ever like it needs youthfulness in order to evolve and grow and we you know are are that and our our team is that like we're a young team and we're figuring out like what works what doesn't work like how we really like mm -hmm. address these problems um and you know, to like, it's, yeah, it's like year four, we're getting ready to do hamantaschen, uh, folks for who, who, who are new to hamantaschen. It's a delicious triangle cookie filled with, uh, you know, jam. My favorite is the poppy seed, the moon. Um, and that, you know, each, each year we get to make hamantaschen again at Zeitlin's like I'm excited because that means that we're, yeah. we're doing it. Like, this is it. This is, this is what it is right now. Like every year we get to, you know, do the Seder and the Seder meals. Like that's coming up. That's going to be amazing. Um, we have a great opportunity. Uh, we're going to do a second Seder um, at a synagogue, I believe. So we're getting ready. To, just like all these different opportunities, all these different blessings, like getting to make this. So just for, for, and, for my, for my non-Jewish listeners, the Seder is the meal that Jews have uh, during Passover. Uh, there's usually two of them because we, we can't celebrate eating, stuffing our face just one night. It's got to be two nights. Um, so it, it's kind of like the equivalent of, 
I guess the it, from from a scale standpoint, it's sort of like having two Thanksgiving meals back to back. There's like a lot of stuff there, and, and it has some tradition and culture behind it. But so you're catering that. I was going to say, as you're talking about, you're we're the young ones, and we have to figure things out. Um, and I was going to look at your brother, but telling him what I tell my my clients when I begin to work with them, and they say, "Oh, my business is doing great." Here's the ultimate test. Can you take a vacation for a month and never check in with the office or check your email? Yes or no? And if the I'm not asking so, you, I'm saying that's my to me that's to, uh, for any business owner, that's the ultimate test whether you have a a truly functioning good business. Because if the answer is absolutely, it's not easy to achieve, but you guys figured it out, right? You have a great team, you don't have to do everything by yourself. You should have procedures, you should have systems. Um, that's the ultimate bar to, to, to cross, right? Uh, to, to go over is, is, is the business is serving me and I'm not the lowest paid employee in my own company, then I can take a vacation and I can take a vacation <laughs> and not check my email. It's okay. It's going to run because it's running, I would say like a Swiss watch, right? That's the ultimate. Uh, you Look, you might, you obviously not going to get there in four years, but you can work, even though you guys are young, full of energy, uh, you still need a life, right? The, the, the balancing of your person, you know, work-life balance has a much more meaning and impact on entrepreneurs than people that work for a living as corporations, right? <laughs> we actually, Zev, we started a book club Zeitlin's Deli and Candid Leap. Candid Leap's the name of my agency, where my leadership team and his leadership team, and we're, we're starting next week this book called Conscious Business by, by uh, Fred Kaufman. And it kind of covers exactly these points of really how to build an intentional business and um, do great and, and set and set and just like live a more meaningful, impactful um, life through it. And so we're totally aligned. And yes, yeah, Sam and I are not quite there at all yet, but it's, it's a vision worth working towards of uh, just really having a well-oiled machine yeah um, just being you know consistent and, yeah and, and you know great, what to be, to, to be very honest with you because i've been obviously white beard been doing this for a long time um <sighs> there's no tricks and hacks and all this other crap the 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 formula to get there is really simple it's not complicated right so you have a great product and then you build a team around it that complements each other and they're skilled in areas. You want to cross train, obviously, but everybody's skilled to bring something to the table. You as the owner cannot, should not make all the decisions because you suffer from cognitive dissonance, meaning you can make an objectively unbiased opinion as a business owner. I haven't met one that could do it. It's your business. You're very passionate about it. You, you dissuade by your own beliefs and things you have. Now, you have an opinion, you should have an opinion, but if you have a great team, discuss it, okay? Get some, get some other opinion. Yes. So when you, when you have the, the concept of great product, exceptional service, to me that's even more important than product, and then an executional team, team that executes without you, right? You're the conductor in the orchestra, then that's great. It's really not complicated. Then you say, okay, if it's that simple, why is everybody struggling with? And the answer is one of those three components. So product, service, and then team. Usually the owner is mm -hmm. probably the one that breaks everything else, breaks it down because of their ego, because of their inability to be humble and recognize, dude, if, you're the, if you think you're the smartest guy in the room because you sit at the head of the conference table, you're in the wrong room, dude. Because you're not. Because you're not. And if you're, if you're great, hire people that are smarter than you. Right? It's not a contest. It's your company. You deserve to get the benefits of a success, but you won't get there by yourself. Right? I don't... Look, Steve Jobs, and maybe people consider to be you know, the, the, you know, the god of marketing, whatever. He wasn't. He had a great intuitive sense from a marketing and customer delivery standpoint. But he was a jerk. He didn't build Apple by on his own. 
Yeah. It was his team that was surrounding him. Yeah, he rode them hard, and he got them to to accomplish things if they wanted to run away. But you, you understand what I'm saying? It, this is to me, it's not complicated, but we as a business owner are often our worst enemies in in getting to that point where, I mean, I I, I watch how like you see he was in Spain. He had some sort of a, I don't know, he had a a, a meeting in Spain somewhere in the, in the universe, right? That's fun stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. great stuff. Um, yeah, we um, so in um, in the suburbs of Chicago, um, there is a Jewish deli exhibit um, at the uh, Illinois Holocaust Museum, and I took the whole team there. <laughs> Um, every like six months, they have a new pop-up exhibit and the exhibit was called I'll have what she's having the Jewish deli. Um, we all remember cats is, you know, Meg Ryan, Billy Crystal, you know, having a bout at it. And, um, it was, it was a great time because we, uh, we all went, um, the overall exhibit, if you read everything, it was like 45 to an hour. And it really showcased like not only um, Jewish Deli just uh, in Chicago, but Jewish Deli, like how it came, like what was happening. And um, we then like went to like out to eat after. And it was a way for us to kind of mm-hmm. get out of the kitchen, get out of, you know, the day to day and just, you know, have some great food. Um, we actually, we, um, so we went to, uh, this am- amazing restaurant, Ida in, um, uh, palace Dinian restaurant. And then we went to an amazing Jewish deli Hoffman's down the street. So the whole team got, got to eat some just exceptional food, have like great conversation. And, um, yeah, mm-hmm. like, uh, this story of the Jewish deli is like being told like in real time. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's just incredibly special to get to do this with, you know, a great team and a family mm-hmm. and, and like really like kind of, uh, it's like really strong. You desire know, when, to you know, when you go into a any business, but particularly in, in this food service, when you go into a, a restaurant, a deli, uh, whatever it is, even a, a, a cart in the city, a guy that's doing halal food or whatever, right? You, you can tell when the person that's working there and serving you is doing it for a higher motivation and reason than just hand you something that you're going to just put in your mouth and say why wow, that's good right you you started the conversation today by saying we love serving other people we want to share our culture uh hey we took our team who were basically making jewish deli food we took them to a palestinian restaurant right so uh, it, it comes across and the, the other point i wanted to make is that you have a vision as an entrepreneur each one of you in your own separate business but the mistake that so many people owners make is that if the vision stays with you and all you want to hire people to do what you tell them to do, you're an idiot. You should not be in business. Mm-hmm. But if you hire people that can be part of your vision and and are willing to be held accountable and to be part of the story that's unfolding you telling, then everybody has a piece in the success of your business, right? So um, you, you, you open the door, as they say in legal terms, Palestinian restaurant. So I... I I can't talk to two wonderful Jewish guys, Chicago, California, Spain, whatever we're from, without talking about the plight of our homeland in Israel and this horrible period that that we're living through. But my question is more: Do do you are, are you exposed to any anti-Semitism, any feelings? Because to you, I mean, you wear it on your on your white apron, right? You go to Jewish deli. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you to free Palestine, whatever the stuff is. I mean, obviously you're in a building, so they have to behave, but does that come across at all or you don't feel it? 
No, we've we've just really um, we've really been able to bring folks together, um, all different backgrounds, um, and we've been able to you know serve many different uh, of our friends, of our family, and um, that you know the whole idea behind Zeitlins is to um, you know in a wonderful way, just take care of other people, make delicious food, um, teach folks about, you know, the Ashkenazi Jewish culture, the Jewish food. And, um, Hal and I both, uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for Hal. You probably but, could, um, but yeah. you can speak. He, Sam sees more. Yeah. Cause he's in Chicago. I'm over here on my, on my laptop. So I'm not, I wish I could eat, eat the food and see it. So yeah, it's, um, it's surprising to hear, but Sam, I think the energy he brings, um, it really is part of our vision to, to feed and bring people together. And, uh, one initiative Sam and I are talking about now is starting up a charitable arm of the, of the company called conditions for Chicago. Um, you know, part of, part of our vision is, is feeding and bringing people together and like by definition, the way food costs are and just running a business, like a lot of people just can't afford to eat our food in Chicago. Um, it's just, you know, it just doesn't make sense. And so uh, we're, I'm planning on for the software product we're building, taking 10% net revenue, putting into a fund, using that to make knishes and to spread uh, the food to the people in our communities that otherwise wouldn't really be able to access and share, share with our food and people don't have access to, to food. And so we've been thinking about it for a long, a long time, but um, it's, it's nice. It's nice to see it coming together, and I think really, it's. Um, I think the genuineness Sam brings to serving people. I think uh, it probably shields Sam from some more yeah. combativeness, and, um, and and we and have so we we do a farmers market South Loop. This was this was the first farmers market we ever did, and one of my dear friends, uh, Ayub. Um, uh, has it has has a wonderful uh tahini company uh uh makes delicious palestinian food and you know uh shares shares his culture oh, now his i can hear i can hear and, the the uh, lawnmower now i didn't hear the weed whacker well, before <laughs> that's yeah funny. you hear ding 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 um yeah no like um like what makes me so excited and so happy and so blessed and so just like living in joy is that, you know, at these farmers markets, you have people from, from like all different countries, all different areas, you know, just showing up yeah. as them and uh, that we get to show up. Yeah. As so us. you're, you're lucky because um, you know, New York has a lot more incidents and exposure for, uh, anti-Semitic violent behavior against, you know, randomly against Jews, but uh, we'll get past it. I think um, one way or another, we're going to get, we're going to get this solved somehow, despite that. I mean, you guys can do what Bombas did with socks and buy Knish, we donate a Knish to a, uh, <laughs> to a homeless shelter near us. Because, um, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. You don't need my ideas. You guys are smart. You're smarter than that. Well, no, it's, it's, we thought, well, we'll see. And that's, you know, once we have our storefront and we have that as like a, a durable revenue source, and we know that we, we can meet our expenses, then the opportunity to really serve more and give back is going to open. Right now, you know, we're sharing a yeah. kitchen running around, driving food all over the city. But that's, um, it's, yeah, it's just really, and this is just the start. But yeah, we can't wait to see one, two, three years from now of how we can, yeah. we can try and, and, to and, do that. And, and, and yeah, like, you know, there's, there, there will be some, you know, some twists in the road, you know, things, things we didn't foresee, but right now it's, it's just so nice, uh, you know, that we're almost in March and it's going to get into busy season and, We'll be so uh, yet so yet. let me end by asking each one of you uh, just one question. Um, you're young. Sam's a little older. It's okay. We'll forgive him. One thing, 
one thing so, you've learned out of being in business for your own, one thing that made a difference to you that you've learned. Sam, you can start. I'll, I'll do age before beauty or whatever they, the saying is. One thing that one thing you learned has helped in, me? in your entrepreneurial journey, right? From the day you decided not to work for anybody else till today, four years later, what have you learned in terms of how to run a business or something about yourself, something you can share? Um, I think I've just learned like that you never know until you try and that, you know, asking that question, calling that person up, uh, trying to make bagels in your apartment when you move, you know, somewhere new to fill a void and to bring people together and uh, reaching out to your brother, you know, like all these things, like you never know until you try and um, be careful what you wish for because so, it could come so the, true. The flip side of what you, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the flip side of what you said, you never know until you try from an entrepreneurial standpoint is you also have to take risks, right? You, you, you got to do it. And, and I'm, I'm going to bring it back. Um, Shema Yisrael. Okay. Exactly. So Every that's, day. that's Every for day. everybody else is the, the, the most common simple prayer that Jews say, uh, thanking God for, for hearing them. So Hal, one, one, one lesson tidbit you've learned and you're moving yeah. pretty fast with, you're moving pretty fast. I, with so, I mean, you, you started d dabbling and now you're the car's moving. It's been, yeah, it's been a fun journey. I would, I mean, there's, there's so much that could be said, but I think what you said about humility, and I think like, I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, I like, I can't, and uh, I started the business because I knew I couldn't do anything by myself. I knew that with a team, you can do better work and solve more problems. But I think it's the attitude of just like, oh my gosh, I'm so incomplete without having surrounding myself with just those right people. And I'm just now at a stage in the business. I've hired over 200 people over the last five years on the internet. You know what I mean? Where it's just when you like, when you find someone and find people who fill in your gaps and you share values and vision, it like, it just uplifts your day. I just, I'm enjoying work more than I ever have getting to work with certain people in the companies in the deli and, and the agency that I just like, I just, we just share values and we just care about the same things and we all want to serve people. So, you know, just summarizing that is, you know, just having the humility to realize that, you know, other people can help complete us and make us more whole. And very often and also the, in our the person you least expect who's going to do or say something mm -hmm. that's so impactful is the guy that's going to surprise you. I've seen that so many times in my career. In one of the companies I spent 15 years, uh, the cleaning guy, his name was Pedro. The cleaning guy had more insights about the company operations than my own president. Uh, because, I mean, he was going around, he, he was interacting and talking and cleaning, and he'd come to me and say, why don't you guys do this? And I said, How'd you pick that up? We have meetings and committees and memos. So anyway, you're, you're, you're right, Al. It's, it's humility and, and accepting and appreciating what everybody brings to the table. So, all right. Well, we're going to meet again on, on the next step, right? When maybe... Maybe when the storefronts open. Storefront. Storefronts open. Then the it's a Knishes. Then it's Hal's wish coming. to have a subscription business for Knishes. Because, because. I don't, I, the subscriptions is about having a high average order volume Coach value. Board. And we, Coach we've got that. We've got your what? We have Zeb. Kosher oh, bagel dogs. dogs. Oh Coach my God. Kosher bagel dogs. Kosher bagel dog. Frozen kosher bagel dog. <laughs> in the section 
like yeah, we're see. at we're at stadiums. Listen, I, I, I listen, don't know. That's, I, well, that's a little I'll thing. give you my wishes that the next time I see you guys will be on the on the carpet at Shark Tank, where you pitch this this kosher thing, and Mark Cuban's gonna say, "You're in. We're bringing it to my to the stadium." All right, guys, thank you so much. Of course, we're staying in touch after this, but I appreciate. You taking the time and uh, Mazel Tov, good luck, Beatslacha, Yeshar Kuach, all of the above to both of you. Thank you. Right. Peace, Peace everyone. Have a good one. <laughs> bye bye.